The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, I think we are live now. Um, a wonderful good morning or good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are very happy that so many of you have accepted our invitation for today. Let me welcome you to today's webinar on the treatment of spent caustic with our latest technology, Equicrytox. My name is Bjorn Otto, and I have the business unit Equicrytox at the h and &E Group. And I welcome you from Germany today. Let me introduce my esteemed colleague, Jeff Broderick, who will later explain the technology to you in detail. I will give you just a brief insight into our company. A quick rundown. As I have already said, I will do uh, the introduction and then my colleague will take over. If you have any questions, um, there should be a question box at your monitor. There you can write the questions in. We will collect them and answer them at the end. Okay, let's not waste time and get started. Next slide, please. Let me start with a short story. In the year 1932 in Germany, the global economic situation is at rock bottom, the unemployment rate is gigantic. Dark black clouds are rising ever further in the sky of Europe. The future is very, very uncertain. The global and political world order does not exist. Conflicts everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, and it is precisely at this time that a man with a vision comes on stage and says, when fresh water becomes processed water and then wastewater, wastewater must also become fresh water again. And this visionary and pioneer was called Willy Hagen. And he founded a company, Hagen Elsesser, and short H&E, which is today one of the world's leading supplier of water treatment plants and is speaking to you right now. His personal commitment, his vision, and his courage to tackle things and develop solutions have shaped the company's guidelines to this day. And you can see him here with his first employee on his way to a service assignment at a customer site. Next slide, please. In the meantime, the h &E Group has built more than 30,000 water treatment plants worldwide making it one of the leading suppliers in that field. We have received countless positive customer recommendations from companies such as GE, Shell, Siemens, Infineon, RWE, and many others, who report on the professional use of H&E. The ma majority of our business is with returning customers, and that's a clear statement. Next, please. And that's exactly how we see ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, as a reliable partner for industrial water and wastewater treatment. We continue Willy Hager's legacy by always striving for the best technical and economical solution for our customers. And we do this by bringing together in our group the most recognized experts in all the necessary technologies for water treatment and production processes. We bring together the current challenges with our highly experienced team and thus aim further strengthen our position as one of the leading suppliers of industrial water treatment. Next, please. H&E is an essential part of Aquarium Group from Switzerland, to which we belong with various entities around the globe and each with different orientations. Thus, H&E GmbA is not only the largest single company within the group, but also very broadly positioned for almost all tasks related to industrial water treatment. In addition, our subsidiary in India and Aquarium products from Austria, which focus specifically on ind individual uh, technologies, also belong to the group. Our branch in Italy has a clear focus on the oil and gas sector, and we will talk about SCFI, Shortly, as you can see, we are internationally positioned and especially the Aquacritox team is composed of different units and countries. So please don't be surprised about our different email signatures. Next, please. As a supplier of water treatment systems, we offer the complete program 
to not only plan our worldwide plans on paper, but also commission and operate them. We exact what exactly is needed from a turnkey solution to an operator model with financing, we decide together with, the, with our customer. A worldwide service with 24 seven availability completes our range of activities. However, it is important that we have all disciplines in house and are therefore largely independent of external input. Next please. Let us now move on to today's topic, our technology presentation on aquacritics. I would like to say a few words about our company SCFR from other. The company SCFR was founded by our colleague John Reagan to solve the disposal problems of producers and processors of wet waste. John and his team specialized in the field of advanced hydrothermal oxidation, short HTO. Their technology Aquacritox undergoes continuing optimization and improvement and has matured over several years. The company began in early 2011 to examine the existing technologies deployed within the oil and gas market to deal with spent caustics and adapted a variation of the Aquacritox technology to achieve improved oxidation performance for almost all types of spent caustics. In 2017, SCFI and the HNE Group joined forces to further develop the Aquacritox technology for spent caustic by designing and constructing a transportable demonstration unit, which can be deployed on client, on client sites to prove the performance of the technology. After extensive testing and design optimization, the demonstration plan is now approved and operational. So, that was a little bit the introduction. And now I would like to hand over to Jeff, who will go deeper into the technology. I wish you a lot of fun and good insights. Jeff, please. Thank you very much, Bjorn. And um, thank you uh, to each one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and join with us today. I'm gonna um, begin with a video very shortly, but Along the way, if anybody has any questions, as Bjorn has already uh, highlighted, please type the questions into uh, into the side uh, side questions uh, comment section. At the end of the presentation, I'll run through uh, as many of those as we have time for. And uh, if we do run out of time there, uh, I can email you uh, replies to these, and uh, we can email you more details later on as well. So let me start with the video first, if you just bear with me.
Okay, so spent caustic treatment using uh, Aquacrytox SC. Aqua, uh, spent caustic uh, is a hazardous waste. It is uh, produced primarily on oil refineries from scrubbing process of various hydrocarbon products. The resulting waste stream is toxic, dif difficult to treat, um, odorous. Uh, it's uh, poisonous to biological treatment systems, and in most cases is highly alkaline. The most common of uh, the spent caustic uh, uh, waste is sulfidic. This is, uh, will contain high concentrations of sulfides, including hydrogen sulfide. You also get mixed caustic, uh, uh, mixed effluent, sorry, which uh, contain chrysilic and phenolic compounds and also naphthenic uh, spent caustic. The processes for, for treating these uh, vary in different ways traditionally. However, the uh, aquacrytox technology uh, will work uh, exceptionally well with the sulfide content. So the sulfides tend to inherently be easier to oxidize and we expect to achieve almost uh, complete destruction of uh, all sulfidic compounds up to 100%. The more difficult to treat compounds are the uh, organic compounds. So the phenols, uh, the naphthenic components, the chrysilic components. The, the the harder to treat uh, nature of these means that although we may not completely destroy the COD associated with these compounds, we do destroy the compounds themselves. So at the end of the process, there will be almost no phenolic compounds and we will destroy the the compounds which lead to the toxic nature of the spent caustic. We would expect typically to achieve, as said, around 100% removal of the sulfide compounds and also for the COD itself between 40 and 75% COD destruction of the organic compounds. These are then converted to the likes of organic acids, which can easily then be destroyed by biological treatment and other treatment downstream if, if this would even be required. So hydrothermal oxidation. Now, the table, the, the graph that you can see here shows uh, an area where we have high pressure and high temperature. So SCFI originated with supercritical treatment systems. So this is uh, working with water above the critical points. That's 374 degrees C and uh, 220 bar gauge. At this point, water becomes supercritical. The, uh, the problems and issues you would have with oxygen transfer disappear, whereas oxygen is now completely soluble in, uh, in the fluid itself rather than being the rate limiting step. Unfortunately, due to the high levels of salt compounds and dissolved solids in spent caustic, operating at this region is, is not possible. Uh, although oxygen is infinitely soluble in supercritical water, dissolved salts become very insoluble at this point. So over years, SCFI have optimized their process and moved to a just subcritical point. So as close to the critical point as is practically possible so that we're maximizing pressure, maximizing temperature, and most importantly, maximizing the destruction of COD in the waste stream. I'm gonna take you now through a video of the aquacrytox process itself. If you just give me a second to start the video and I'll talk us through. So on startup, water is pumped to around 165 bar gauge and the system begins to pass water. This is the start. At this point, we don't have uh, process fluid running through the system. So we're, we're getting the system ready for operation. 
The system will work with up to 50 grams per litre of COD and has a retention time of approximately 12 minutes. Uh, the heat exchange and reactors are all built with highly corrosion resistant uh, nickel alloys. And once a system has been pressurized, heating begins through an electric heater. The central loop you can see here is uh, isolated from the main process and uses water as a heat transfer fluid. This system operates around 88 bar. This system is used to heat the fluid now entering the package and the heated water passes through the reactor. You can see now that the heat transfer system is working. The water is uh, circulating. We are cooling water We're using a, an air cooler rather than the water cooler. Heat from the hot process uh, is exiting the reactor and it's uh, recovering the heat uh, and, and allowing the heat transfer to transfer heat from the back end of the process to the front end of the process. The electric heater will run to maintain a temperature of 250 degrees C. And you can see now that once the target temperature is achieved, we start to pass actual spent caustic into the system. And oxygen is injected into the upstream of the first economizer and at two additional points down the process so that we, are, we achieve sequential oxidization of, of uh, the COD within the liquid. The use of multiple oxygen points allows us to optimize the, the process and stepwise oxidization of the, uh, of the effluent. This means that the temperature profile can be controlled. So we, we would oxidize uh, a portion of the COD uh, at each step of, uh, of, of the system so that we don't exceed the allowable temperatures and we can cool at, at intermediate points, allowing us to optimize how, how much COD we remove in each section. At the back end of the system, we then have the pressure control letdown system and then onto the gas separator and then the pump for, for sending the, the treated effluent to any downstream process that you may have. So the heart of the process is a tubular reactor. We, we don't use a large pressure vessel. This system operates with a single continuous process path right from the beginning of the process. The spent caustic will pass through the system, through the heat exchangers, through the reactors sequentially, all the time passing through the same pipe. So there are no issues here with solids deposition. And um, we can be sure that we have plug flow in the system. So there's no back mixing. So with a large pressure vessel tank, everything would go into this tank. It's then mixing your products, which you have destroyed, are then coming back to the beginning again. And, and you can appreciate that the overall reaction performance is improved with a plug flow system. So at each stage, you're passing your, um, your compounds for oxidation along a long tube. You can then add oxygen in three separate stages. You can monitor the temperature continuously and you can apply cooling continuously in these three separate locations to ensure that you've optimized the process performance and, and um, achieve maximum COD destruction. Also, the use of an uh, a tubular reactor over a standard vessel allows us to reduce our retention times. So our total retention time is only 12 minutes for this system. It increases safety. It means that we can use a much thinner walled system and maintain the same levels of integrity uh, e even even with the, the the smaller volumes and the smaller pipe sizes, the large pressure vessel inherently have very thick walls. They're heavy uh, and they're cumbersome, 
and the performance the performance that we can achieve cannot be achieved in the same way so optimize operating conditions the control system that's supplied as standard with the aqua crytox units will monitor temperature continuously at various stages along the reactor and across each of the heat exchanges we operate up to 300 degrees c so we increase the reaction rate because of the temperature, increased temperature. The, uh, the solubility of oxygen as well, it's, um, it's understood that gases dissolve less well as temperature increases, which with oxygen is true up to around 100 degrees. However, oxygen solubility actually increases as you then increase above 100 degrees until you reach the critical point where oxygen becomes completely soluble in, in the fluid. Because the temperature is higher, we then also achieve higher conversion rates of the compounds in, in, the, in the effluent. We are able to react uh, the harder COD components within the liquid and destroy those uh, either completely or to a much greater extent than would be possible at lower temperatures. And operating up to 165 bar gauge has a large impact on our ability further to dissolve oxygen. So the higher the uh, operating pressure, the more soluble the oxygen will become. So we're pushing more oxygen into the liquid and oxygen transfer into the liquid phase is the rate limiting step in all oxidation systems. And we have overcome this and optimized it as far as is possible. Okay, so aquacrytox technology, we use oxygen and not air. So traditional wet air oxidation packages will use air. Air has approximately 79% by volume nitrogen. Now, the use of oxygen means that we use significantly lower volumes of gas. So we're injecting only oxygen. This allows us to achieve approximately 120% stoichiometric uh, uh, addition of oxygen. If we were to use air, we would have very large volumes of nitrogen. Now, these volumes of nitrogen themselves, they, they have no impact on the overall reaction process within the liquid. However, they do mean that we have to inject larger volumes of gas, which is inefficient. We have to then uh, accommodate this large volume of additional gas throughout the process. So heat transfer becomes more problematic. The off gas at the end of the system is massively larger if we're injecting this nitrogen. So by using oxygen, or although uh, there are some, so, some additional equipment requirements for using oxygen, the overall advantages far outweigh any of the disadvantages that, that would come with that. On top of this, the material selection is all corrosion resistant alloy 600. So this is a well-established material selection for um, uh, high temperature oxidation processes and is, is really the benchmark of material selection for, for um, corrosion resistance. The valve-free pressure control and letdown system. Now, you can appreciate that operating at 165 bar and with elevated temperatures is going to um, cause havoc with a conventional pressure letdown system. So you're dropping large pressures across a small control valve. You have potentially suspended solids. It's an extremely, uh, extremely aggressive uh, process. So to overcome this, SCFI have come up with a a novel system, a novel patented system to let the pressure down gradually. So rather than dropping the pressure across a single point control valve, the pressure is let down gradually across uh, coils of capillary. So the, flow, the fluid flow is continuous. This ensures that we don't have issues with corrosion and solids deposition and blockage. 
and also means that the uh, aggressive nature of this fluid doesn't cause uh, excessive erosion on these tubes, leading to very long service life and minimal maintenance requirements. Control and automation. I uh, briefly mentioned this earlier. Now, the Aquacritox system comes with an integrated control system. This control system is designed to oversee startup of the package, shutdown of the package. It ensures safe operation. And it, it means that this system is, is really plug and play. So you can push the start button on the package and the system will carry on with everything it's supposed to do with minimal intervention and the outlet of the system will be optimized and you can be confident that the package is working well. Integration of this control system into your plant control system is simple and the level of that really can be determined on your requirements. Uh, we can transmit as much or as little information or maybe just alarms depending on how your application is working. Training on this package again as you can appreciate would be very simple. Um, that the level of, uh, of, of interaction is minimized. So the package itself, the package is designed to be modular and plug and play. So we've spent a lot of time and effort ensuring that the package can be delivered to your site, it can be installed, there are, it's a compact footprint, and most importantly, the time taken on site to install this equipment is minimal. We, we don't require you to, to self-assemble this unit. We require only minimal utilities, uh, which in this case would just be an electrical supply and a process water supply, as well as, as, as the necessary drains uh, and, and so and oxygen as well. So I mentioned that we require oxygen. Now, if your site has oxygen, then, then this is great. We can, we can pipe the oxygen supply straight into our package. If you don't have oxygen, is, is, is would be typical, then we can either supply a system for generating oxygen within the package. So that's with a PSA system. And we would supply a compressor and oxygen generation package also with a nitrogen generation package. Um, for supplying the nitrogen required for the gas separator at the end. Or we can take a, an, an external supply from a tank storage system. So you can, uh, you can bring oxygen into your facility and then we can use liquid oxygen, convert that to gas within the package and then inject that into the system as well. So, so there are several options for the oxygen supply. The package is designed with all of the standard PED and ASME codes that, that you would ex expect to see in an oil and gas refinery situation. So we, we comply with uh, the, the ASME codes for the heat exchangers, any pressure vessels, um, for the pumps. So you can be confident that our systems will meet your specification requirements. The system's designed to be plug and play, so it really is as simple as we can make it. We've designed the package to be installed and we've designed the package to be um, easily maintained, easily installed, minimal uh, interaction with, with uh, the site facilities and really designed to get you up and running as quickly as possible once the package has arrived on site. The maintenance is fairly standard. The unit is produced from all of the standard process modules you'd expect to find on any process equipment. We have the standard pumps, valves, uh, heat exchangers, the instrumentation is uh, uses standard instrumentation on the whole and we can provide that to your vendor lists if necessary as well. We can fit the maintenance in with your main plant schedule most importantly. So if you have a standard annual uh, maintenance schedule then there's no reason 
why you would require any additional maintenance for our piece of equipment. Now, Aquacrytox is considered to be the next generation in performance over wet air oxidation. So I have a table here which briefly outlines the main advantages of Aquacrytox over a conventional wet air oxidation system. So conventional wet air oxidation has temperature and pressure limitations, typically up to around 80 bar and around 260 degrees C. Aquacrytox pushes that envelope to 300 degrees C and 165 bar. So you can appreciate, as previously mentioned, oxygen transfer is much, much higher with this system. Um, and we operate with up to 120% stoichiometric oxygen. We can do that because we're using pure oxygen and because of the operating pressures and temperatures that we, we employ in the package. A conventional wet air oxidation package would use between three and 500% stoichiometric oxygen. And in addition to that, we, we've discussed previously that with wet air oxidation, you also have to accommodate the nitrogen. So if you're using higher volumes of oxygen, you're using much higher than volumes of nitrogen. So the amount of off gas generated by a conventional wet air oxidation package is, is much, much higher than we would generate from our package. So we are injecting 20% additional oxygen at the end of this, this process, up to 20% of, of the oxygen we put in will be coming out as off gas, but there's very little else in that off gas. So with the tubular reactor, we have a lower retention time, five to 20 minutes, typically 12 for a standard system. A conventional uh, wet air oxidation system would be using a ve pressure vessel kind of reactor. They would be employing up to 90 minutes of residence time. So not only is this a large vessel to start off with, the residence time required is even larger and you end up with a, a very heavy cumbersome unit which also uh, has back mixing, which isn't, uh, isn't present in a tubular reactor. The overall package footprint and weight, therefore, of a wet air oxidation package is large. The Aquitox system is compact and lighter and easily transportable as a complete package. And then we have the pressure letdown system. So we use a tubular capillary kind of letdown system, a traditional wet air oxidation package would be dropping the pressure across a control valve. And this is an extreme service for control valve, which typically leads to maintenance issues and the requirement for frequent change out valve seats uh, and, and associated items. We use electric heating for our system. So if you're heating a process to uh, 300 degrees C, theoretically it can be done with steam. However, to achieve the pressures that we, we need in our process, direct steam injection isn't practical at 165 bar. So the use of electrical heating enables us to, to push the pressure envelope further without a need for additional heat exchanges. Um, a conventional wet air oxidation system would typically employ direct steam injection, although heating exchanges can be used. They, they would then also need a system for supplying the steam. You would need the steam generation equipment, which, which in a refinery situation probably isn't a big deal, but then you also have to pipe that into your package and you also have to pipe the condensate back away from your package. In addition to our main Aquacrytox SC systems, we have a small volume application package. So this is a, a general package. It, it is uh, very suitable for spent caustic applications. It's not, um, it's not only aimed at those applications, but it does work very, very well. We would expect to achieve 99.9% .9 COD reduction of sulfidic waste again. But rather than using oxygen, because this is a small scale plant, we're using hydrogen peroxide as the oxidizer. So 
we would need a supply of hydrogen peroxide for the system. This is then dosed into the package uh, to facilitate oxidation. This is a very compact package. It's ideally suited to smaller volume sulfidic applications, which, which are relatively common in refineries. It's uh, plug and play operation again, so it's a very small unit. It can be de delivered uh, as, a, as a single container. It can be very rapidly deployed on site and it uh, performs exceptionally well for spent caustic uh, destruction. The process we can see here, uh, again, it's very basic. We have uh, spent caustic being pumped into uh, to pressure. Uh, along with a separate hydrogen peroxide system. The amount of hydrogen peroxide is, op is optimized um, and controlled to ensure that uh, we are only dosing hydrogen peroxides that's necessary. The reactor itself is still a tubular reactor, but the reactor, the tubular reactor is installed within a, a jacketed vessel, which is temperature controlled to ensure that we achieve the correct temperature for oxide oxidation. Uh, and and enable, uh, allows us a greater degree of flexibility in control and optimization. This is again electrically heated, so the jacket can be heated, there are no heat exchangers, and the connections on site are minimal. Cooling is then achieved with cooling water. Uh, this is uh, the simplest and most compact method in this application for cooling and we let the pressure down uh, into the gas liquid separator. Okay, so standard aquacrytox systems. We have three standard systems. We, with uh, the high pressure SC options, we have a 10,000 litre an hour unit and a 2,000 litre an hour unit. Again, these operate at uh, up to 165 bar gauge and up to 300 degrees C and have a maximum COD inlet concentration of 50 grams per litre. Both of these use oxygen as the oxidant. And we have the smaller H unit, which is up to 400 litres an hour. The pressure is lower in this system and the temperature is lower. But for the oxidation of sulfidic spent caustic, this is, this is ideal for, for high levels of destruction of those compounds. The COD uh, limit for this package is 30 grams per litre. Now, spent caustic is at times very difficult to define. So we offer a laboratory testing service so we can take samples of your spent caustic uh, irrespective of what they are and where they've come from. And with this unit, we can then determine the level of destruction of COD that we would expect to achieve from um, the main aquacrytox system. We can uh, give you an idea of the compounds that may be left over, if any, and, and give a, a confirmation that they are benign to biological treatment. We can confirm uh, odor removal, and we can also, with this unit, uh, run uh, get a very good idea of how we can optimize the main package as well to achieve maximum COD destruction. So we, we can take any of your samples and we can prove and show the performance of our equipment. So currently we have a unit operating in Saudi Arabia. This is a, an 80 kilo per hour unit uh, with up to around 50 grams per litre maximum COD uh, allowance at the, at the feed. This package has an integral oxygen and nitrogen generation system. So within the very few modules that you can see in this picture, we are processing spent caustic. We are generating the utilities that we require for the process. And all we require here is um, a water connection and an electrical connection. And then this whole unit is plug and play. It sits here, it will process spent caustic 24 hours a day with minimal site intervention. Um, 
uh, and with maximum performance. You see, we, we can supply the entire system in a single 40 foot and two 20 foot containers. These are very easily installed on site and can be transported using standard flatbed lorries. And the installation time on this is a, a matter of a couple of days rather than, than perhaps months for a standard and conventional wet air oxidation system. So in this case, we are achieving um, more than 80% total reduction of COD. So the feed to this plant is a mixture of sulfidic and refinery. So the bulk of the COD is sulfidic, and for that we're achieving 100% removal. And for the uh, the organic side, for the McCaptain's phenols, chrysalates and naphthenates, all the other organic compounds, these have a lower overall COD destruction, um, giving a, a, a total destruction in excess of 80% for both sulfidic and organic. But the compounds that we are then producing at the end of this package are suitable for biological treatment and can then pass on to a standard uh, wastewater treatment package and cause no downstream issues. So, so we were taking this toxic soup of, of compounds and we're turning the majority of that, so we're oxidizing the majority of it and making the rest of it benign for downstream treatment. And that brings me to the end of our presentation. Um, if you have any questions, I'll have a quick look now to see what we have. Okay. Right, I have a question. What is the effect of sodium hydroxide concentration on the oxidation process? Okay, so Spent caustic on the whole will contain large concentrations of sodium hydroxide. There's not always the case, but on the whole, you will find large concentrations of sodium hydroxide. Now, as you oxidize your waste stream, you're converting um, organic compounds to carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide will actually react with the caustic soda. And, and neutralize the caustic, caustic soda. So we require a certain amount of caustic in the feed to mop up, in essence, any, any carbon dioxide to, uh, to ensure the system remains alkali and not acidic. So, so I hope that answers that question. Um, okay, is it possible? Okay, so I've been asked a question here about treatment of um, spent caustic with ammonia. Ammonia um, is a compound which is not easily oxidized within a wet air oxidation system or within a hydrothermal oxidation system. I'd need to get back to you on the actual ability to remove ammonia. But I, th I think it's one of those compounds that that we would expect sometimes to come out in the vent gas from our uh, our downstream gas separation system. What else do we have here? Um, Okay, what are the safety issues related to pure oxygen usage? Really, that depends on, on your site and how you would be applying this to the process. So we minimize any inventory of oxygen. So uh, as far as possible, it depends the, on also the source of your oxygen. So it's, 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 a, it's not the easiest question to answer. I think one point here to mention is because we're using a tubular reactor we, we don't have any gas pockets in our system so whereas we're injecting uh, if we had a, a, a tank reactor you would expect the top of this tank to be uh, gas phase and 
in this case, you, you can, um, it, it, if you don't operate the system properly, you can end up with an explosive atmosphere in, in that section of your reactor. That simply isn't possible with the aquacrytox process. So although we're injecting pure oxygen into the, into the process stream, there is at no stage a significant volume of oxygen present within our process stream to cause a hazardous environment. So the amount of oxygen we inject is continuously monitored and optimized, and we wouldn't be injecting a significant excess of oxygen, which may be possible in a traditional wet air oxidation package. Uh, I may need to get back on the rest of this question because it's a very, very long one. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, I've got a question here. Um, what would be the footprint impact um, due to the use of oxygen? Um, a PSA system for oxygen generation it is incredibly compact. As you can see with our um, our current application that, that I ran through uh, just a, a few minutes ago, we can include the whole oxygen generation system within within a container. So that obviously is going to be larger for a 10,000 litre per hour unit, but but overall that that size is smaller where we're compressing a smaller volume of gas than would be the case for a conventional wet air oxidation system. So we're only compressing oxygen rather than the oxygen and nitrogen. So so the compressor system is smaller for our package for the same COD. Um, treated spent caustic have foaming issues. Okay, now, our experience is following at the aquacrytox process, we don't have foaming issues. The compounds that lead to foaming are, are typically destroyed. We, we can, however, with our laboratory testing, confirm this. So if you have a spent caustic which is causing you problems, then if you send us a, a sample of that, we can, we can confirm that we can destroy the foaming uh, the foaming tendency of, of, of that, uh, that spent caustic. Let's have a look here. What's the maximum COD limit for entry into the system? Okay, so for the standard high pressure aquacrytox system, it's 50 grams per liter, but this does then uh, lead into turn down and, and other questions. So for, um, let me have a look at the numbers here. We, we, can, uh, we can destroy, um, around 120 kilograms of hour per hour of COD um, using using this package. Um, and turn down is then achieved by, um, we, we can, let me get this, uh, explain this properly. Okay, so the package is designed for a limit of 50 grams per liter. If you have higher concentrations of COD, these can be accommodated by dilution. So what we would do is we would take uh, treated spent caustic from downstream of the package, and we would use that to then dilute the feed to allow us to, to reduce the COD concentration to within the allowable limit of the package. So when we have an understanding of your application, we can advise you on uh, dilutions, or if necessary, a maximum flow uh, allowable flow rates through the package. So, so we would tune our system to your application. Uh, can we reuse effluent from the plant immediately in our process? Um, on the whole, the answer to that is probably yes. However, we would obviously need to understand your process 
Um, laboratory testing will uh, give us um, an understanding of what we can achieve with our process, and then we can marry the two. So there's a good chance we can, but we would need to obviously uh, have a discussion on, on what, what you're trying to achieve with this. Um, okay, so I've answered the question on the higher CODs. So yes, theoretically, uh, uh, we will take higher COD values, so 100 or 200 milligram, uh, grams per litre of COD. Um, the question here is actually milligrams per litre. The COD inlet to our package limit is 50 grams per litre, not, not milligrams. We can accommodate higher concentrations by dilution. Um, I've got here, uh, what is the area required for 10 metric tonne per hour? I think probably the easiest way to answer some of these questions is going to be to forward out our standard literature. We can provide uh, models for the packages uh, if, if that's going to help. And I think now we've covered pretty much all of the questions. An off gas. Okay, someone's asked about the off gas here. Um, okay, so because we're using uh, a reduced amount of oxygen, so only 100%, uh, sorry, 120% stoichiometric, where we have an excess, uh, a maximum excess then of 20%. So for our two ton package, um, we would expect perhaps 20 kilograms per hour maximum of oxygen. Um, uh, off gas and then the way in which we we measure the oxygen because we're not injecting any nitrogen we we employ a, a system to monitor the off gas from the package and optimize the oxygen injection to do this we have to supply nitrogen into the system so that we have a reference um, concentration, as it were. So we need to measure the concentration of nitrogen uh, of oxygen in nitrogen. So our off gas in this case from a two ton unit would be a maximum of 100 kilograms per hour, which is obviously significantly less than a package where we would be injecting both uh, oxygen and nitrogen as air uh, in the first place. Uh, we can give you more details on this if you can send us some application details as well. So um, I mentioned earlier with ammonia, ammonia is one of the few compounds that, that may travel through the system uh, and be found in the off gas. Uh, on instance, some instances we may find small small volumes of volatile hydrocarbons. Typically, the gas from this system uh, contains very little in the way of organics. Uh, a, a very simple gas scrubbing unit could be employed, um, and we can confirm the off gas from the package with our laboratory testing. So if you have samples, we can give you uh, an understanding of the off gas that would be produced by the Aquacrytox package. I've got lots of questions. Let's see if we can find one more. <clears throat> um, okay, there's lots of questions about diluting the feed here as well. So, so yes, if if we had uh, a feed stream, say, of 100 grams per litre COD, we would need to dilute that by 50%. Uh, that would then, yes, reduce the capacity of our plant to uh, in for, from 2000 liters per hour to say 1000 liter of influent effluent uh, influent feed effluent sorry so 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 we would have to dilute by 50% which would then reduce our our processing at from the outside by 50% as well so if we have an understanding of your application we can then suggest and recommend the best piece of equipment for you to for your process okay now 
I think we'll leave it there with the questions. If anybody does have any questions, then then please do contact either Bjorn or myself or any of our sales team, and uh, we will get back to you um, with our answers. Our details, uh, you can see them now. And if uh, again, if anybody would like any additional information, please contact us. Now, thank you very much for uh, for joining us, and um, I hope you can enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Goodbye.